Okay, I'll just kind of give you a glimpse of the future. So, what do we expect? Now, you know, as the world is going to become more and more digital, and if you see all the big tech companies, we're going to become a world where AI is first. So what does that mean? A lot of companies are going to start using AI to actually gain competitive advantage. You know, it's what I call weapon of mass disruption. You know, it's one of those game changer, if you will. In fact, um, it can also be used as a weapon of mass accelerate. Why is that? Because a company can use this AI to be able to catapult yourself in front and ahead of your competitors. So, how do we get here? So what we did is we created this machine, right? And then what we did is we, we give it a brain. You know, we put in a processing chip, uh, what do you call a chip? And nowadays we have a specialty chip that's, that's going to be far faster that can handle a lot of artificial computation. Then what we did is that we trained this machine. So we give it data, we algorithm, and then we thought, hey, you know, let's just put in some sensors. Throw in a bunch of sensors. Now what have we got? So we got this machine, now it recognized speech. It understands languages. And it can even translate from one word to different kind of forms. Okay? And for the business world, well, it can boost performance. And it does a great job doing that. It improves productivity and quality, and it drops costs substantially. So, now it does these things, all these things, this, these outcomes, it achieves these outcomes, and it does it beyond human capabilities. I mean, we're, the advances in machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, has gone, not only it matches, but it outperforms humans. So that's good and great. And that's where the problem is. The problem is, machines, AI machines, are coming to this world. And they will be replacing human workers. Why? Well, simple. Because they're going to do the job, and they're doing the job better, faster, and cheaper. Look at this. Look at customer service. That's an example. And real, these are the actual case. It takes an AI machine four and a half minutes to handle a customer complaint. Well, us humans, it takes 18 minutes. That's four times longer. And then on top of that, it picks up a call. It picks up a call in two seconds. It takes us humans 55 seconds to pick up a call. And it can do all this at a substantially lower price. To handle one customer, it, it can cost about 8 cents US. What's what? 4 pesos? It costs us humans 2,050 cents. That's 125 pesos. I mean, so if you really think about it, um, that's something that is just too compelling for any businesses. So, what do you expect? Well, as expected, job losses. Okay, but this is going to be a global crisis. Yes, there's actually a lot of research done all around the world today where because close to half, 50% of every workers in the world is going to lose their job to AI automation. Okay, that, and the way they did it, they have a very methodical way. If they look at every 800 occupations and they break it down to activities, a vast majority of the activities, they can be done today by AI machines. We're not talking about, hey, you know, the technology that's going to be created in the future. No. It's today. The technology you already have today, the, that can perform what we're going to do, what we are doing today. So what does that mean? Well, it's going to be 1.1 billion people in this world for the next 10, 20 years whose job is going to be automated. 
But you know, let's look at an example of uh, developed countries. Oh, United States. Let's look at U.S. Well, U.S., they're saying that close to about 51%. 51. It's a developed country. How can that be? You know, they're skilled and, well, 51% of the jobs have the potential to be automated. And you know, that accounts for $2.7 trillion in wages every single year. Well, how about a developing country? Let's look at the Philippines. We're here. And the Philippines, well, 47%. We looked at uh, contact center BPO in the Philippines. That's the driver of the growth of the Philippines for the last 17 years. Well, 17, 47% of the 1.2 million Filipinos in that sector also have the potential to be automated. Now, if you look at that sector, it has 1.2 million direct employment, 3.2 million indirect employment. Combined, you got 4.4 million Filipinos in that one industry. Given a five, de five to one dependency ratio, close to 20 million Filipinos, 20% 20 of the entire countries is dependent on that one industry. So, well, look at this machine, this thing that we created. You know, well, they, they, they kind of, they work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They don't take breaks, they don't take nap and siesta, they don't even take a vacation. Okay, with these things, if they want to expand the brain capacity, memory, they can do it anytime and anywhere. I mean, these kind of cognitive robots now, they have fine motor skills that can actually do surgery for us, even how delicate that is, surgery. And then on the other hand, you can go they can move crates, inventories, and move them around warehouses without human supervision. You could look at the cargo bay, the shipping docks. They can move containers without any supervision today. And one day, a couple years from now, well, not a couple years, but they claim 2020 or something like that, they can operate our motor vehicles for us. So, hey, they can take us anywhere, any place. Mental capacities, well, they're great in recognizing patterns. They can retrieve information on the fly, and they can optimize continuously. What does that mean? These machines are learning. They are learning. In fact, these machines, they can do a vast amount of intense computation. It can even teach itself. It can self-taught. It can create its own simulation to teach itself to improve. And then, on top of that, yes, I mean, besides that, it can optimize and to make sure that it can predict. See, what sets us apart with us humans and animals? Let's not compare against that, but because we can plan, we can set goals. We have the ability to predict. Well, we create, for the first time in the history of mankind, we create this machine that does a better job in prediction, that can actually predict in a fairly accurate manner. So, what is this machine over humans? Well, the advances machine learning, the advances deep learning, artificial intelligence, well, not only have this so-called things that we created has matched, but it can even outperform what we can do. This is something that is quite a very bit of great concern. And yet, at the same time, it's something that, okay, now how do we solve this problem on the things that we created? Well, the good news. Now, what the good news is, well, they have a weak spot. They also, they're vulnerable, okay? Now, these machines, well, they lack creativity. They lack empathy and morality. I mean, they can't imagine things. They can't feel anything, right? And they can't make 
any judgment. Okay, we're asked, hey, us humans, well, we can build something from scratch out of nothing. We can conceive ideas, creativity. We can connect and relate with other humans. Okay? And then we can make sound judgment based on morality and humanity. So, well, so what we did, what we did is that we, we got the strength of these, uh, the power of this machine, and then we get the strength of humans, and we combine them. We merge them, we fuse them. And what do we got? Augmented intelligence. I mean, if you think about it, these machines are just raw computing power. Okay? Well, that's like the left side of our brain. We can just get the machine to do that. We can take care of the right side of the brain. We can create. We have emotions. And they don't. So what we want to do is we combine these things in order to come up with augmented intelligence. So that's why we actually call it AI to the power of two. You know, as they say it, two brains is better than one. So what have we done in the past? Well, we spent eight years of research and development. We gone through about 87 trials, and we tested among 26 different vertical industries. And this is one of the trials we did. So what we did is that we have a group of people, and we got the top 20% doing its own thing, fantastic performance, great results, and then we got the bottom 20%. Now, the bottom 20% are the poor performers. In fact, they're in the dehired list. You know what that means? They're about to get fired. <laughs> and so what we did is that we get these, uh, the, the ones that are about to get fired, and we gave them an augmented intelligence system. And what happened? As you can see, the results, they can outperform even the top 20%. Okay? And if you look at another, this is trial number 83. And what happened here is that we got a fantastic U.S. agents. They got 20 years of experience. And so they've been running all these programs and campaigns. And then we tried to get in the Philippines, in the provincial, not even Metro Manila, these are called the near hire. You know what the near hire meant? They tried applying in five, six, and seven call centers. Nobody wants them. They're in the near hire because they're not qualified. So we got these people, and we put them in the augmented intelligence system. And if you can see, what happened is that they beat and outperform the agents who's done this for 20 years versus the near hire who's unemployable with zero experience. And they actually outperformed those guys. And on top of that, what was very impressive was the customer that they acquired, well, they stayed a lot longer. So in, instead of lasting, uh, comparing against the agents who have been doing it for 20 years, these customers stayed with the company a lot longer by 24%. In the business term, that's fantastic. So, where do we go from here? Well, as businesses, first step is, there's three steps. Simple, but difficult to do. First, of course, is you dare to discover. I know it takes risk. I know people don't like risk because of the fear of the known. But you have to dare to discover. You got to go out there and try it. Okay, only do you explore can you eventually exploit afterwards. Then, second step. My mentor is Dado Bonato, and he basically said, you gotta dig deep. Why do you have to dig deep? It's because you wanna make sure you can innovate a product that you're the only one who can do this. It's very competitive, differentiable. It's a product that's for the global market. So that's basically what you do. And when you dig deep, you will only be the one to have the insight, that special insight, that intel that nobody else has. And the third step is, well, 
you got to have to be able to iterate and continually iterate improvement, improving until you have a good product market fit. That means to say you have to then get the innovative product you did and then you have to monetize it and so you can actually feed the whole cycle and continue R&D, dig deeper together to gather intel and insight and then to be able to monetize it and the company grows that way. Well, options, well, you have to ask. There's two ways of using augmented intelligence. Well, one is that you can use it to reassign your workers to do the higher value tasks. Or you can actually complement your workers to do the harder to do work. Now, if you decide to go to take the first option, reassign, well, on the simple first tier, the simpler ones, the repetitive ones, you automate that. That way, you free up those workers to focus on the higher value task. Now, if you want to complement, then you have to empower these lower skilled workers so they can do the higher skilled work. So, well, you need to ask, are you here to disrupt? And when you disrupt the market to be winners, or are you here to be disrupted? And then if doing so, you become winners. I mean, those are the things that you have to ask yourself. Um, and nowadays, you can use AI to basically um, unlock the benefits, wherein these benefits can be used as a competitive advantage to be able to drive your company, your competitors out of business. Skills required, a lot of people will you ask, how, what do we do? Where do we go from here? Well, very simple. You have to develop the skills where you know the activities are go out to get automated. Just like psychology, sociology, even sales. Because that's going to be premium. And on the other hand, the higher skilled work that requires designing, developing, deploying this AI technology, you will be in great demand. As for the educational system, well, as the workforce evolve, they have to emphasize and focus on creativity. You have to emphasize on emotional intelligence as well as leadership and coaching others. So anyways, are you here racing with or against machine? Well, you can, you can race against them. Good luck because we haven't seen a lot of people who can do that very good. On the other hand, you can beat them. You can fight them. Or, as they say, if you can't beat them, join them. Thank you.